Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at the programming language we're going to use throughout this module, and the language is Python. So Python was developed by a gentleman called Guido von Rossum in the Netherlands in 1989, and von Rossum is the key principal author of Python and indeed continues to help the development. He's given himself the uh, title of Benevolent Dictator for Life, or BDFL, you see it around when they talk about Guido. So he's, it's his vision of what a programming language should be, but there have been hundreds and indeed thousands of contributions from other people who have written libraries or additional functions for the language, but he's the, the guiding light behind it. Python is named after the uh, British comedy troupe Monty Python, who were uh, a bunch of British comedians, Eric Idle, Terry Jones, John Cleese, Michael Palin, Graham Chapman and Terry Gilliam, and they had a TV show called Monty Python, I can't remember what it was called, and uh, they made a bunch of movies, Life of Brian and Monty Python's Guide to Life and all kinds of stuff like that. So it's just worth remembering that one of the members' names was Eric Idle. In terms of the timeline for Python, I suppose the three main versions of it, version 1, 1989, version 2, 2000, and then version 3 was released in 2008, so any online material you'll be looking at, typically it will be version 3 or over. With software, every time you add a new release of it, you add a new version number. So let's say the first time I write a program, I call it version 1.0. And if I make a few small changes to it and release it again, I might call it version 1.1. If I make a few more small changes, I might call it 1.2. If I make a few more small changes, I might call it 1.3. And then if I make some massive change to it, I'll just call it version 2.0. So if I change the version, the main number, that, that indicates that something, I've made big changes to the code. So between version 1 and 2, there were substantial changes to Python, and between 2 and 3, there was big changes. But there were a number of intermediate subversions in between, if that makes sense. And I guess everybody knows about versions of software. We know with Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows Vista, Windows whatever, different versions of the same kind of thing. Python is what's called a multi-paradigm language, that is to say it can do a lot of different things. It can do all of these things. It can do structured programming, object-oriented programming, functional programming, aspect-oriented programming, designed by contract and logic programming. What I'm telling you really is that Python is a real Swiss army knife in terms of programming languages. So it can do a lot of different things very well. So it's designed very effectively and it's a great language to learn. And um, it, does, it, it does what's called dynamic name resolution and things like that, and garbage collection. So all of these things mean it's a really good programming language, um, which is great. In terms of the architecture of the language, how Python works is there's a core of the language and then there's additional libraries added onto it. But the core gives you the strength of the language and then you can add new functionality onto it. So let's say I'm creating a, an image processing program and I'm using Python to do it. Python will have its core functionality and then it will have other libraries I can call upon that will help me build the tool I'm trying to build. So it's a nice architecture because it's really simple and you add on simply to it as opposed to some big single monotonic piece of code. It's built really modular and really lightweight and as packets, which is a nice architecture. Uh, Python is considered one of the best languages and indeed it's, it was rated one of the top 10 every year since 2003 and um, it was voted the programming language of the year in 2007 and in 2010. So that's kind of cool. So it's a good language. And um, Let's see what does Python look like. Here's some Python code, don't worry about it, I just want you to see the fact that it's English in appearance, we'll say, and there's words involved in it. So unlike some programming languages where it's a lot more numeric, at least for Python there's some um, language, English language in it. Who uses Python? Well, organizations like Google do, Yahoo, CERN and NASA both use it. Python can also be used as well as a programming language, it can be used to create web pages and write um, scripting 
uh, script uh, web applications. In terms of where it's used, the main place I would see it in particular is for image processing or graphical software. Packages like Blender and uh, Houdini, Lightwave, Maya, Motion Builder, uh, all of these things that are used for developing uh, computer games and things like that. Uh, image processing tools or drawing tools like GIMP or ImageScape or Scribus, PaintShop Pro use it as well. And a lot of musical software, so it's very popular in the image, the video, and the audio areas. Python is very popularly used. In terms of how we write Python code, Python has its own specific development environment called Idle, named after, I mentioned it, Eric Idle, one of the members of Monty Python. So Python has this IDE, interactive development environment, called Idle, which colors different words that it recognizes. So it, it, it might recognize some special words. It might color them orange. It might know that you're putting in messages. It might color that green. It might know that you're putting in other kinds of messages. It might color that red. So it's much easier to see what it thinks you're doing, and it gives you clues about your programming. So thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.